There's a new approval system in SharePoint. This will work on both lists and libraries. It's really easy to set up, requires no knowledge of coding or even Power Automate, and it integrates with Teams. You're gonna love this thing, so let's just jump straight into it. Microsoft has been rolling out a lot of features into SharePoint lately. A lot of these are tying into Power Platform and, and other, other tools, but making it really accessible for users, making it to the point where they don't have to leave SharePoint at all to configure these features. That's incredible, and it reduces the learning curve and the time spent to add in basic functionality like a simple approval system. So what we're gonna be doing is walking through what this feature is, how to set it up, how to use the thing, how to approve these documents or these list items. We're gonna show, I'm gonna show you everything about how this thing works. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump into SharePoint and I'm in a basic document library. Now, whether you're in a list or a library, the process is going to be the same for this. What we need to do is we need to click on the three ellipses and we need to go to the automate menu. Depending on your screen size, you may see automate already there in the command bar. But if you don't, like I don't, then you'll see it under the three dot menu. So under automate, you're gonna click on configure approvals. Now you should have this feature by now. It was rolled out a while ago. If you're on GCC tenants, you, you may be a little bit behind, but I think it's in GCC as well. But once you, once you see configure approvals, we're gonna click on this, and there's just one option. That's it. Do you wanna turn this feature on or don't you? That's all we have to do here. We can turn on the approvals. There is a message here to, uh, to tell you more about what this thing does and some of the columns it's going to add. But we click on apply on this screen. And that's it, this system is running. It's that easy. What we've got here is it's added an approval status column. This approval status column is linked to this functionality, this approvals functionality. It's not just a status column as you'll see soon. Now, what this is going to do is allow you to submit something for approval to another person. There's no hard-coded workflows that will, will, that will require configuring, there's no real setup, there's no knowledge, as I said, of Power Automate. You don't need to know any of that, of how it works on the back end. It's just a really simple, easy approval system. So now we're ready to submit a document for approval. We can select that document, hit the three dot menu, and you'll see request approval here. Once we get the, re the request approval form showing, we've got a few options here. Number one, who do we want the approval to be sent to? Who should be the approvers of, or approver or approvers of this document? We have one or more options here. We can pick uh, Adele, and then we could type in Diego as well. And then that'll enable this other option, require a response from all approver, approvers. What that really means is, should everyone be required to approve this, or should just one of those people, and whoever re uh, responds to it and approves it first, then it'll end the, the whole workflow here. That, that all obviously will only work if you have multiple approvers on here, because if I delete Diego, the option goes away. So because there's only one approver, so it doesn't really make sense to show that option. But we'll leave this with Adele Vance, and then I'll play, uh, type in this. Please review this. Um, slide deck. We'll submit that, and you'll see at the bottom it's it's uh, it's creating the approval request. Now this is a great time to point out that if this this content that you're enjoying, you want to keep learning more about SharePoint, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you know whenever I put out a new SharePoint video. But our approver, our approval is all submitted. Let's go over to Adele's account and see what that looks like from her perspective. So I'm logged in now in, in Adele's account. Now, what we need to do first, because she doesn't have the approvals app in Teams, is we're going to go to the apps menu and we can type in approvals and then you'll have approvals. You'll see an add button here like these other ones if it's not already added. Otherwise, you'll just click the open button 
in her case, she's probably going to be approving things uh, on a regular basis. So we want to make sure to pin this app and then maybe move it up a little bit higher so it's easy for her to get to. But you'll see the, the, the slide deck that has been uh, sent to her for approval. You'll see that the status is requested. You'll see some other information like who sent it and who it sent to. And in this case, of course, it's her. But then she can click on this, see the status of that request, click on the PowerPoint if she wants to review this and see, you know, check everything out, make sure it's all looking good. Notice you'll see that this is marked as final. This is basically a read-only document because we're in the middle of an approval. Now that is the same, uh, that goes for anyone who has access to this. The, the, the file will be read-only, and if anyone tr does try to make changes, like if we switch back to my account, if I try and make a change to this document, then it's going to warn me that this will cancel the approval that's currently in progress. So it, it will ensure that and enforce that no one can make changes to this until this is no longer in an approved status or requested status, things, things like that. I'll show you that when we get there. I'll cancel this for now and let's switch back to Adele's account. So Adele has some options here. She could see the history. So if this has gone through multiple approvers, then she'll see that history here. But we can type in a message and then click on approve. So the record just got updated. If we go back into my account and refresh this screen, it's currently still in a requested status. It may take a few seconds before it gets updated uh, in SharePoint from, from the Teams app. So we can refresh this one more time. One thing I could point out as well though, is there's additional columns that are added to here when you enable this feature. It's not just the approval status. There'll be approvers, responses, and approver, approval creator. We can add all three of these columns to see more information about this particular uh, approval process with our documents. We could see that Adele is the approver, the approval was created by me because I'm the one who submitted it for approval. And right now there's no responses back yet. So that's still in the process of being updated. So we can refresh this one more time. Okay, now it's all there. So you see that the response came in from Adele and the, the, the approval status is now in uh, an approved status. If we try and edit this document again, we'll see the same message. Let's set this back to benefits. We have the same message because this is currently approved content. If we want to make a change to metadata or to the, the document itself or the list item, because that would really just really just be metadata if you're using this on a list, it's going to revert the approval back to like a, an unsubmitted state. Let's do that now. So we can close the details pane and this the, the approval has been canceled. This is no longer in an approved status. It's in a not submitted status. All the data here was cleared out because it, now we've made changes. If we want this to be reapproved, we will have to resubmit this for approval. So this is kind of a good way to enforce that all of the content is, it follows a, a, a predictable business process. Another way we could have approved this is if we actually click on this not submitted thing right here, then that same window will pop up so that we could resubmit this for approval. And we're back into this, the process again. Adele just got the notification and it's on her to approve or reject this item. If we click on this again, we'll see a similar to screen the, to what Adele saw, where we see the details of this approval process. Who, it's, who has approved it, who's rejected it, what, what's happened in that line, is, especially in the case of having multiple approvers that you've submitted this to. We could also cancel the request if we want to, and then it goes back to a not submitted state. So there's a lot of options here for just a couple of clicks of enabling a feature that will provide a ton of benefit for you. Now, there's some other ways you can get this feature enabled as well. 
if we go into the site contents uh, section and we create a new list, some of these list templates at the bottom here will have the feature enabled automatically. If we go to the content scheduler with approvals, then you'll see among the features that it has, it will have the approval column integrated with approvals in Microsoft Teams. So if we use this template and we can uncheck that, then when this list gets created, it'll automatically have the approval enabled. We'll see that field here. And if we go check the configure approvals option, then we'll see that it's already turned on. So some of these lists have that feature already enabled. And if you've been wondering what is this approval status thing because you've used one of these templates but didn't know what it was, now you know. Now, if you're new to SharePoint or you're just here learning more about it, I've got a newsletter that'll keep you updated on all the great features that are coming out. Just click the link below in the description to get signed up. It's free, it's weekly, what more could you ask for? And if you wanna keep learning more about SharePoint, then click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.